Hello, my name is Charlotte and welcome to another video where I discuss mental health. My name is Charlotte and I make videos about mental health, chronic illness, life and breasts. Lots of breasts. Can I have my milky bed, please? I made a video last week talking about how my mental health has been affected during lockdown. Um, but as I said in that video and as I've said in other videos, I don't know how much it's massively affected me. Um, partly because it's something I have mental illness all year round, irrespective of lockdown. Um, and partly because I'm actively doing things to try and keep myself as mentally healthy as possible. And those are the things that I wanted to talk to you about today. So the first thing that I want to say is that the most important thing about that I'm going to say is that you need to do what's right for you. Um, what I'm going to talk about may not be right for some other people, uh, maybe not right for most people. The most important thing is doing what feels right for you and what feels right for your mental health. Um, and this isn't just specifically about people with mental illness. I think this relates to everyone. I've written a whole long list here. Look, that's my really scruffy writing. Um, and it's not in any order. I can't remember what order I wrote it in. So let's see how this goes. Uh, the first thing I've got is set small goals. I was making a vlog uh, sometime a couple of weeks ago and I was, talk I was talking about how having three specific goals, one personal, one practical and one creative because... Um, for me, creativity is a massive part of who I am, so I need to have that fulfilled. Um, now, I have, I'm, as a single mum, I have a to-do list as long as my arm, so I'm never going to get everything done with three goals. But the idea behind having those three goals is that I can, if I get nothing else done, I know I've got those three done, and I've not just done something for the house, but I've done something for me to enrich me as a person. So an example of those goals practical would might be tidy your bedroom um clean the floors change the bedding that kind of thing something that is achievable although tidying your bedroom that's quite a big job something that feels achievable to you whether you feel it needs to be a really tiny goal um or a bigger goal that in kind of incorporates several different things a personal goal might be something like go for a walk or facetime a friend um do a workout that kind of thing um and th so something that you want to do not something you need to do whereas the practical thing is something you need to do do you want another color um and then the creative goal is something you know for me it's a bit different i, I write music so for me my creative goals are kind of around music so it might be work on this verse of a song or that kind of thing but if you don't do that then it could be do some colouring in, do a craft, something, something that is really enjoyable for you. And it doesn't even, or do baking. As I said at the beginning of this video, it's all about kind of finding what's right for you. I actually started off doing really well with those three goals, but then I had a really shit day and I got out of it for about a week. And now I'm getting back into it. Getting someone to hold you accountable is actually quite important too because then you've got someone nagging you. And that somebody for me is my sister. The feeling of kind of satisfaction that you get when you have been productive. Like I have spent years of my life being unproductive, wallowing in bed in my own filth. And, you know, looking back now, it was like a self-fulfilling kind of cycle thing because... If you don't feel able to get out of bed and do things, you're going to feel shit. And if you're going to feel shit, you're not going to feel up to getting out of bed and doing things. So just taking that step and doing something, ticking things off your list. And this is a time when, you know, for the most part, um, for people that are home, for people that aren't able to work at the moment, obviously it's different if you're a key worker and you're working. But for the most part, we have a little bit more time on the hands, but that's still more time on your hands to do stuff that maybe you wanted to do for our things jobs that you may have wanted to tackle for a while the next thing on my list is basically just get dressed but what i what i wrote as kind of a sub thing is this is a chance to experiment with your clothes because no one's going to see you so i had been wearing no 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 i've been wearing clothes 
uh, in lockdown that I've never been brave enough to wear. After lockdown, I might be able to wear them out and about. It's And it's the same with hair and makeup as well. I'm not a massive fan of doing that, as you'll hear in another video. But it's a chance to play around with your makeup. No one's going to see you. If you happen to see the postman through the window and you've got like pink eyeshadow on and black lipstick, so what? It's a chance to really have a bit of fun with that because no one's going to see you. Obviously, if you live with other people, then they're going to see you. You don't mind when mummy wears silly things, do you? <coughs> oh, you're drawing a tiger. Um, following on from what I've just said, I've also written down, use this time to make time for what you normally wouldn't have time to do. Um, again, following on with those kind of the three goals thing. I haven't been able to work on music for a while because of looking after Edie. And now I've got that bit more time and trying to see the positive in this really shitty situation. The next thing that I've done is something that I'm really enjoying doing in my head and that's focusing on the things that you can do after this period has ended. Um, obviously we don't know when it's gonna end. Obviously we don't know when it's gonna end. So that is a beautiful picture. What is it? <coughs> it's a tiger. That's Edith's tiger. What was I saying? Yeah, so kind of I've been making a wish list of the things that I want to do in my head. Um, it's pretty much the stuff that we were going to do anyway, but I'm going to make the effort to make sure that we do all of it. Although obviously a lot of it is summer orientated and we don't know if this is going to be over by the summer. But if not, then I know we can do it next summer. The next thing is uh, routine. Um, I think routine is important for mental health in any situation, but especially in a time like this. And it doesn't have to be a strict routine, like get up at this time, do this, this. Um, and I've always been like that with Edie, like um, it's important for babies to have a routine and children to have a routine. And she has her routine, but it's not, you know, she has her breakfast by this time. It's just, we do this and then we do this and then we do this. So I have kind of a, um, a free flowing routine, I guess. The next thing that I've written down is touch base with people. As I mentioned earlier, keeping in contact via FaceTime. Um, it doesn't even need to be that much because I know that some people struggle with uh, video calling. It's something that I didn't like for a very long time because for me, it just felt like it heightened the distance between me and people. Like I know that when I used to live at home with mum and dad and I was just, I was really poorly whenever they went on holiday, I wouldn't like to FaceTime them because, or Skype them because it just felt like it heightened the, di the distance between us. Um, and that's fine if that's the case with you, but you can keep in contact by other ways. You can um, write letters to people, which is something that is kind of a forgotten, it's a forgotten art, I guess, the um, being pen pals and stuff. Edie's like written a few letters to people, texting people, emailing, just making sure that you touch base with, uh, touch base with someone in the day, each day, because knowing i i've been in a position in the past where you've gone the whole day and never had any communication with another person and that is an incredibly isolating and draining feeling it's one of my biggest battles in my head when you feel alone um it's when i wrote my album a lot of the songs on the album were about that about feeling completely and utterly isolated the opening of one of the songs it's called letters from a broken heart and the lyrics were on this island i wait but not a single boat passes my way i could scream for hours and it would echo for days on this island i wait So I know that feeling, it's not a healthy feeling, it's not something that is, it's not wait, a place where you want to be. So touch base with someone. And in a similar vein to that, social media. Um, use social media in as healthy way as possible. I have very strong views on social media. I actually loathe social media, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter I see as a way of being like a news source because that's where I go for up-to-date information. Uh, so I don't massively see it as like a social media thing. Um, Facebook and Instagram, I have, I have, it's something that I feel if you think you'd like this, I, ha I 
I've got several videos worth of content on my feelings on social media, especially in terms of the mental health community. Um, but just in general, oh my God, I hate social media. Um, what was I saying? Use social media in a positive way. Mute or unfollow those who you find unhelpful mentally. I've done that. I have muted a few people that um, aren't helpful for me. Um, I've muted people, people that are talking maybe about their weight a bit too much. I'm not talking about people with eating disorders, just friends, people that you know, family, friends, even family. If you need to mute someone, mute them. Uh, they won't know that you've done it. Everyone has the right to curate their, their social media however they want to. You can block, mute, unfollow, whoever you want to, and don't let anyone make you feel guilty about that. Try to limit your news sources. At this time, um, we are being bombarded with articles and things that are supposedly factually accurate. Last week, there was um, something put in the papers about a traffic light system for the UK about moving out of lockdown and the first stage was allowing certain workers back to work. And one of those was hairdressers. And today in the papers, it's now saying a completely different source saying hairdressers may not be, be able to open for another six months because we can't find a way to, to make it safe. So that's two completely contradicting articles. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to reshoot. That's beautiful, thank you. Um, that's two completely contradicting articles and that's just one example. It's like that across the board. At the end of the day, just don't put too much pressure on yourself. If you feel like doing something one day, that's great. If you don't feel like doing it the next day, that's fine. Just make sure, keep an eye on yourself and make sure that you haven't spent seven days in a row doing nothing and choosing to do nothing and not getting out of bed and wearing your pyjamas because you will be able to recognise that that's not actually healthy. Um, so yeah, oh my God, this is so, I was gonna film this video when Edie's asleep and I was like, no, no, no. If I film when Edie's asleep, then I can, then I won't get to edit it. So if I film it now when Edie's awake, I can edit it when she's asleep. That's not a good idea. Two year olds are not conducive to not having attention to pay to them. So I'm sorry if I've been a bit all over this, this place in this video. I'm still trying to get into the swing of things in terms of, doing a sit down video like this and talking about something that I've made notes about, it's uh, it's quite difficult. But thank you very much for watching. I would really like to know how you are all keeping mentally healthy or as mentally healthy as, healthily, as, mentally healthy as possible in this situation. Um, I've just realized I've got toothpaste on me. That's great, that's great. So yeah, let me know down below. And also, if you have any questions about anything I'm talked about in this video, please let me know. And I will speak to you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.